bolstered by a new leadoff man. And the resurgence of Travis Hafner take on the Tigers tonight in Cleveland. The Indians got contributions up and down the order to take game one against Detroit. Chris Perez, the man in the middle of a media frenzy over the weekend, was the man in the ninth inning, thwarting a Tiger rally for his 14th save and 15 chances. Tonight, the Tribe gets a look at Doug Fister, who was winless in 2012, but was lights out down the stretch a year ago. Game two of this Central Division showdown is next on Sports Time Ohio. A beautiful night in downtown Cleveland as the Indians and Tigers tangle once again. Tribe winning last night, and they look to maintain their stranglehold on the top spot in the American League Central Division. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians offense getting the boost it needs at the top from Shin Su Chu. In the eight games since he's gone into the leadoff spot, it's no surprise the Tribe is 6-2. and two. He's raised his batting average 39 points. He scored a half dozen runs. He's been on base 19 times. He's really given them what they've needed. He's been in the middle of everything, Matt. And, and when you get on base, you take your walks, he's hitting extra base hits. He's really using the opposite field. And he's doing a terrific job on a nine-game hitting streak. You can see as a leadoff hitter, 394. The on-base percentage is up there. He's brought a lot of energy to this lineup. Take a look at our Nissan Road Ahead pitching matchup here tonight. For the Indians, the young man, Zach McAllister, getting the start. And for Detroit... It is the singer baller, Doug Fister. Well, McAllister now making his uh, second start ever against the Detroit Tigers. In his last start against Seattle, he had five walks. He didn't have that pinpoint control like he did in Boston. This could very possibly be his last start for the Indians before Josh Tomlin comes back. Nissan Road Ahead pitching matchup. Get to a Nissan dealer for great deals on innovation you can count on. Rick, the one problem for Doug Fister, he must feel like he's back in Seattle because he can't yeah. get any run support. Well, he doesn't have to worry about that. He knows if he continues to go out there and put up zeros on the border, keep him low scoring, he's going to get his share of wins. 8-1 last year for the Tigers. He was really their saving grace coming down to help Justin Verlander. And the Tigers made a roster move before today's ball game, calling up Quinton Berry because Austin Jackson's still mending uh, the injury. So Berry, a speedy guy in six minor league seasons, has over 240 stolen bases. We're back with all the play-by-play -play action. Indians Tigers next on Sports Time Ohio.
We're just about ready for baseball here at Progressive Field. Zach McAllister finishing his warm-up tosses. And we'll take a look at the starting nine for Jim Leland's Tigers, brought to you by Kia. Quentin Berry just got the call up today. He's in the leadoff spot in center field. Then Andy Dirks, followed by Miguel Cabrera. Prince Fielder is in the cleanup spot, followed by Delman Young. Then Brennan Bosch, Johnny Peralta, Ramon Santiago, and Gerald Laird. Tonight's starting pitcher for the Tribe, Zach McAllister, brought to you by MLB.com at Bat 12. MLB TV premium subscribers can get at Bat 12 for free. Visit Indians.com for your details. McAllister, 24-year-old right-hander, is making his fourth major league start. Coming off a start against Seattle where uh, he had a little control issue. He walked five. He went five and two-thirds innings. He gave up three hits and four runs. He had one other start against the Tigers. That was his last start of last year, September 28th. A no decision. Just one unearned run over five innings for Zach. So he's going to run into the Tigers tonight. And Doug Fister. Quentin Berry stands in, ready to get the game underway. And he takes a called strike from McAllister. Barry has terrific speed. You see the numbers at Triple A Toledo. There were some who felt Barry should have made the Tigers club out of spring training as an extra outfielder because of his ability to change the game with his wheels. There's a ground ball to second. And Kipnis throws him out and one away. Let's take a look at the Indians' defense brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, saluting the men and women defending our country and watching on the Armed Forces Network. In the outfield from left to right, it's Damon Brantley and Chu. On the infield, third to first, it's Lopez, Cabrera, Kipnis, and Kotsman with Santana behind the plate. Jerry Meals calling the balls and strikes. Gary Darling, Paul Emmel, Scott Berry on the bases. Strike to the outside itch. Andy Dirks was two for five last night. Blooped foul the other way. With their victory last night over Detroit, the Indians have once again equaled their season high six games above 500, and they've opened up a three and a half game lead over Chicago, four games in front of Detroit. Routine bouncer to second. Kipnis throws out Dirks two away. Gonna bring out Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera took a called third strike in the ninth inning last night. On a wicked fastball from Chris Perez. Yeah, they Swan had opportunities missed. in the ninth, and Perez came back, and he was able to get Cabrera on three pitches. Got uh, Prince Fielder to end the ball game on a ground ball. It went 5-6. That was the only time in the game that the Tigers got a runner to third base with less than two outs. That's the way you like it. In the air right field, Chu will play it on the bounce. He was playing very deep with Cabrera at the yeah, plate. Yeah, you have to play him deep. And I'll tell you, McAllister went in and made a good pitch. He just fought it off. That's how strong Cabrera is. Look at that's a fastball inside, 93. Even though it was an 0-2 pitch, he fights it off, gets it in front of Chu. It'll go as a base hit. That's just good hitting. Prince Fielder looks at a strike at the knees on the outside corner. This is what you wanted to see from Zach McAllister coming out throwing strikes. Nine out of his first ten were in there. That's like the game he pitched in Fenway Park, Matt. Remember, it was 70% strikes. In between her nice. for Kochman, but he made a nice play, and McAllister heads up covering the bag. 
And the side is retired. Indians coming to bat when we come back. No score, bottom of the first, and the Tigers starting lineup, or excuse me, the Indians starting lineup is brought to you by Progressive Insurance, proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Shinsu Chu leading it off, followed by Jason Kipnis, then is Dribble Cabrera. Travis Hafner, Carlos Santana, Michael Brantley in the middle. Then it's Johnny Damon, followed by Casey Koshman, and once again, Jose Lopez at third, batting ninth. Doug Fister making his fifth start this year, looking for his first win, although he has an ERA of 159, hard to believe. But uh, he's been the victim of run support, which is no stranger. It used to happen to him all the time when he was in Seattle. Before a year ago, when he got traded to Detroit, they finally started scoring some runs, and the W's went into that win column. He was 8-1 and one with the Tigers last year. He started six games against the Indians. And has been very tough against him. Won each of his last three starts with an ERA of .78. This guy had, you know, good leverage. He's got a nice curveball. He pounds a strike zone. And he can strike you out if he gets ahead of you. No question about it. That rolled off of Chu's foot out to the mound. To further back up your point about the lack of run support for Doug Fister, here's what the Elias Sports Bureau says about Doug Fister's time with the Seattle Mariners. His teammates averaged less than three runs per game in Fister's 59 starts with Seattle. It's the lowest run support afforded by any American League team to any pitcher who started his career in the so-called live ball era and made at least 50 starts with that team. Wow. that's that, that makes it tough to go out there every day. You feel like you have to pitch a shutout. Now the 2-2 two, two to Chew. Rip down the line. Just foul. Chew got off speed pitch and you can see just got out in front of it a hair down on the dirt in a full count so once again Shinsu Chu with a quality at bat here in that leadoff spot he has raised his batting average 39 points in the eight games since going into the top spot but he bounces this one to first. Fielder with an easy play. One down. Let's take a look at the uh, Tigers' home depot defense. Uh, today in the outfield, it's Dirks, Berry, and Bosch. On the infield, it's Cabrera, Peralta, Santiago, and Fielder with Gerald Laird getting a start behind the plate. More savings, more doing. That's the power of home depot.
Jason Kipnis, one for five last night. He's Three back. strikeouts. See that bad uh -huh. angle. He's back. We noticed last night where he was just swinging the bat and going right back up into his hold position. He's getting time out. There's that bat. But not as uh, prolonged as it once was. Not as uh, nearly as deliberate. Right. That was better. Might have something to do with Fister being relatively quick worker. Yeah, well, that's why is it, you, you, you wait for time. I said, give me time. Hold on a second until you get in and get set. Three one pitch Boy, lined in the center field, a base hit for Kipnis. One on, one out. And before as Dribble Cabrera steps in, let's check in with Katie with him to see what the approach is tonight against Doug Fister. Well, Matt, Rick, you know, Doug Fister is a guy who looks for quick at bats. He wants those ground outs, and he's tall, stands 6'8 out there on the mound, so he's got that down angle working for him. The key for the tribe, stay up the middle and make Fister work for it today. All right, thanks, Katie. Here's a Cabrera now, one for four with a double last night. Goes after the first pitch and skies it. Foul territory and out of play. You know, Fister's one of those guys, he likes to work quickly. Um, I would say a lot like Derek Lowe. He likes to pitch to contact. He's not quite the, uh, the sinker baller that Lowe is. But you have to be ready as a hitter because once he gets ahead of you, he can put you away and strike you out, whereas Lowe can, uh, he'll make you, you know, three pitches or less, get a ground ball out. Fister has a good curveball, and so far in this first inning, he's been throwing that changeup a lot. More so than I've ever seen him before, and I mean, I, we're just early here. I mean, he's only thrown 15 pitches, but I bet he's thrown four or five changeups. Well, with a left-handed heavy lineup, you would almost expect that, too. Because There's the, the Indians ball. have seen a lot of changeups, I think, uh, you know, as we've gone over the last few weeks. In particular, yeah, you're going to see that. You're right from the right-handers, you know. When you and they've been seeing a lot of right-handed starters recently, and that, and that's a good thing for the tribe. You look at right hand; they're 21 and nine against right-handed starters. Three and one. The count here for Cabrera with Travis Hafner on deck. In the fastball count, he missed. Ball four. Two on, one out. And Hafner coming to the plate. And normally Fister, a guy that he's going to make you hit his way. He never gives up walks. He's got one of the best walk uh, ratios per nine innings. That's only his sixth walk. Of course, it is only his uh, 23rd inning. But normally he makes you hit your way on. Well, Travis Hafner was one for three last night. But he drove in a run, run with a sack fly and a base hit. So a couple of different times up, he was able to deliver to get runs home. In a very closely contested game last night. This is the 10th straight game a right-hander has started against the Indians. That's inside. One ball, one strike. Out off of his foot. And the count out one and two. It's like that little slider slash cutter.
Jason Kipnis at second base. Cabrera at first with one out in the first. And the one two to Hafner. Just missed a little bit inside to even the count. He's not giving him much sw swinging room. He's keeping everything inside. And this is the department. Boy, that's not Ooh. a bad pitch right there. Holy smokes. Might have got away with one. Hafner off the end of the bat to right field where Bosch will make the catch. Kipnis will tag and go to third, and now there are two down. It's going to bring up Carlos Santana, who went one for three in last night's game. Brings a 262 season batting average into tonight's action. For ball one. Santana batting 353 with runners in scoring position and two outs. Last night, similar situation in the first inning, he drew a walk. And it's 2 0 here. Taking down low ball three. Michael Brantley waiting on deck. Fister goes back at him. It's three and one. All right, 2 0 change up. See if he comes back a 3 1 change up. Doug Vister has thrown more balls and strikes here in the inning. Santana, I'm not sure what. He keeps stepping out there. He's ready to go now. Looked like a fastball that time. Yeah. He was still out in front of it. Well, he got big with the swing. He got long with it. Instead of saying short into the baseball. Fister normally a guy that averages 15 pitches per inning. This will be number 29. 29 coming up. 3 2, and he popped him up. The left fielder, Dirks, makes the catch. The Indians strand a pair, no score after one.
you by McDonald's Cherry Berry Chiller. Cherry and raspberry flavors blended with ice and 100% fruit juice. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T Rethink Possible. And by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Beautiful day here in downtown Cleveland. And it's a scoreless game, second inning, as Delman Young will lead off for Detroit, followed by Brennan Bosch and then Johnny Peralta. Zach McAllister worked a scoreless first. He allowed just a two-out hit by Miguel Cabrera. And now he changed up on Delman Young, who was way out in front. You know, Jimenez said after last night's start, he said he learned something. He started to go with more breaking balls after he saw how aggressive this Tiger team was. And if you could go ahead and throw something off speed for strike one just to show it to him and prove you can throw it for strikes, that's certainly going to help you out that second, third time you face those guys. Off speed pitch hit to right field. Chu is there. And that's out number one. The injury report tonight brought to you by Elk and Elk Serious Lawyers for Serious Injuries. Call 1 800 Elk. Ohio. Jack Hanahan took ground balls again today. Uh, batting practice. Did some running. It's the best he's felt. He continues to improve. Still not ready to start a ball game, though he is available if needed tonight. Again, they'll reevaluate him tomorrow, but it sounds like he's getting very close to being ready to return to action. Josh, Tomlin's, uh, Josh Tomlin will throw a simulated game. I want to say like around 50 pitches. Should be ready to make his next turn in the rotation. We'll see how that goes. It would obviously be the McAllister spot. There's a long fly ball. Deep center. Brantley back. He's looking up. It is off the wall. Karam's by him. Damon there to back it up. Nice job of backing up by Damon. That saved uh, uh, an extra base. That should have been a triple. Brantley overran that ball into the wall. And I'm telling you, Damon had a long way to go. He was actually in straightaway center field. When he picked that ball up, Brantley went a little too far. He should have let the ball come back off the wall then. Watch him. He tracks it all the way down, and then it's just going to go by him. Look where Damon's at. Straightaway center field to save that base. That would have been a one-out triple. So good play by Damon to hustle and back up his outfielder. And that brings up Johnny Peralta. Bounce to third. Lopez looks him back. Fires low and a nice backhanded pick by Kochman for out number two. And again, he had to look right into that sun as it sets. Well, like we said before, better down than up. Yeah. You know, point. so he went down and scooped it. And you expect him to do that. Now, we've seen so many throws over there. He makes that play look easy. And as I'm sure you talk to him, keep the ball down. Don't throw it up in the sun. And he'll help you out. You can see the gloves up. He's got the sunglasses on and a nice pick. And two down for Ramon Santiago. <laughs> when you're on the dead run as a center fielder chasing a ball like that, at what point do you have to make the decision to either A, go for the catch, or B, Try to play the carom because if you play yourself into the wall and you don't even make the catch. That's what he did. He yeah. played it into the wall. He should have uh, two steps before said, I can't get it. It's going to be either off the wall. I can't catch it. Give yourself up and let it come back to you. But the good thing is his, his other outfielder, you know, his off outfielder helped him out. And it saved the base. To left field. Beautiful. Damon makes the grab. Matt Callister works around the one-out double, and we are scoreless middle of the second.
For the Indians, Michael Brantley, Johnny Damon, and Casey Kochman. Fister fires it in there for a strike. Brantley was two for four last night, and he had two stolen bases. Down in the dirt. Indians hitters leading off an inning last night went four for seven. Of course, a lot of that was Chew. And on the homestand, when leading off an inning, they're hitting 349. Brantley, though, bounces this one routinely to the first baseman fielder. One down. That'll bring up Johnny Damon. Johnny Damon 0 for 3. Couple of punch outs last night. Downstairs. Damon takes a strike. It's two and one. Just missed that time. Three balls and a strike. Well, you can see how Fister likes to try and pitch left-handers inside. You know, he's been doing that all night, but he hasn't been able to hit with it. He's been missing with it. Damon gets into one with a deep drive to right. Bosch back on the track at the wall, and he makes the catch. Right at the 375 mark in deep right field, two down. Second time we've seen Damon drive one to deep right field and come up short. Well, he got a, a pitch to his liking. There you see, fastball, but it gets right to the track. He's getting close. It's been about three now in the last couple of games that he's been right to the track. And now Casey Kochman takes a strike. Kochman coming off a three-hit performance last night. Found out of play. The count quickly. Nothing in two. With his three-hit performance last night, Koshman now hitting 322 over his last 19 games. Routine bouncer to short. Peralta on the big hopper throws him out. Tribe goes one, two, three. We go to the third. No score.
cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Glad to have you with us on this Wednesday evening. Tribe Tigers, game two of their three-game series. Gerald Laird will lead it off, then Quentin Berry and Andy Dirks. And a fastball at the knees for a strike. I'll tell you one thing. Zach McAllister's uh, throwing darts now at that strike zone. There's not a... Uh, out of the first eight hitters for the Tigers, nobody has seen more than three pitches. We well, gotta love that. Yeah, I mean you got six guys that uh, have seen three pitches, and Fielder and Peralta have seen two, and that's it. And he's 0-2 here on Laird, and the ninth place hitter will be the first Ooh. one to see more than three pitches. That was very nearly strike three. Bounced it in there. Right field. Chu is there. He's got it. One away. Back down to the field. Here's Katie with him once again. Well, Matt, we've got back-to-back -back firework nights coming up for you June 1st and June 2nd. You want to make sure to get your tickets right now, and you can save on those tickets. Indians.com. June 1st will be Pop Diva Night, and June 2nd will be Country Night. Some of the best fireworks in town happen right here, guys. All right. Thanks, Katie. Pop Diva and Country. Got it all covered. Why not? They had R&B, their last uh, fireworks show. Need a little edge, though. Maybe some yeah, punk rock. Some, some punk rock what for you Scott Radinsky. Uh, you know, you want some rappers? No. Not a little punk rock, though. Well, I'm sure uh, put that request in and they'll take care of it. <laughs> Here's Quentin Berry. Grounded out his first time up. Fouled back out of play. This is a guy Jim Leland wanted to bring up. He liked him in spring training because of his speed, because of the way he could play center field if you can't have Austin Jackson in there. You know, he brings another dynamic or dimension to their offense if he can get on. You can't steal first base. Backhanded by Cabrera. Throws over. Got him. But you see, just knowing that this guy can run, you see how quickly Cabrera got rid of that ball? He had his feet set, ready to go, got rid of it in a hurry to get him. Well, the Tigers decided to bring Barry up after Austin Jackson was scratched late yesterday afternoon. It was during batting practice, and Jackson told reporters after the game once he started to swing a little bit harder, he noticed it was starting to hurt a little bit more. And they said, well, let, let's shut it down. Then. Right. No sense in. And he did nothing today as far as uh, getting dressed or anything. Yeah. He just very casual. Andy Dirks takes a breaking ball for a strike. Found back. Two strike pitch. Back over the screen. Struck him out. Foul tip, first K of the night for McAllister, and he sets him down one, two, three. Middle of the third, we are scoreless in Cleveland.
That youngster's all jacked up, ready to go. Jose Lopez to lead off for the Tribe, and Lopez looks at a strike. This guy has been a very pleasant surprise. He has hit in eight straight games, and he's done a terrific job with Jack Hanahan sideline with the back issue. One and one. Our stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio GMC dealers. He's hit in 12 of 14 games overall and a 357 average during his tear. You know, it's funny when they designated him and he cleared waivers, went down and accepted his uh, play in Columbus. It's almost uh, he comes right back up and you figure, all right, this is where I got to be, man. I got to prove that I can go out there and play. And he's done a great job. I mean, the opportunity came to him because of the injury to Hanahan. But, you know, that's what you look for, opportunities. The door opens, you got to step through it, and so far he has. And it also goes to show you that there's no such thing as, well, the chapter's over. No, you know, not in this game. It just, oh, I don't know about that. That looked like a poor call by Jerry Meals, and Lopez is out on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Fister. Our producer, Jim Murphy, disagrees with well, me. Well, you, you see Laird sitting inside. And when a catcher has to reach out, that ball was about borderline knees, but it, did, it looked like it had plate from that angle. Yeah. And now whether it was high enough, hard to tell. I'd agree it had plate. It just looked like when he reached down, he, he had to catch it awfully yeah. low. Well, sometimes when you sit in there and you have to reach across, the umpires don't give you the call. Shin Su Chu grounded out his first time up, fouls it out of play. Chu had a good A.B. his first time up. He worked the count. Made Fister throw a lot of pitches, but he wound up grounding out. League leaders brought to you by your Cleveland Akron area Lexus dealers. A nine-game streak by Chu. Oh, Looking yeah. Looking for ten. It's a blooper, but it's a nice running catch made by Andy Dirks for out number two. Got a good break on it. A little too much air underneath it, and it lets Dirks come in and make a running catch. I, I didn't think he hit it that well, but he got enough of it for it to stay up. Now Jason Kipnis, and I mean, you talk about a quick inning. One, two, three on nine pitches. We go to the fourth, no score. And for Detroit, the heart of their order coming up. Miguel Cabrera, Prince Fielder, and Delman Young. Zach McAllister, 35 pitches through three innings. 
He's faced 11 hitters and eight first pitch strikes four times. He's had a batter down now, 2 already. Both these guys, they're getting after it, aren't they? They're throwing strikes and making hitters put it in play. Breaking ball, hung a little bit. Deep left center, Brantley will play it as it short hops the wall, and it's a leadoff double for Cabrera. He is 2-4-2 two two tonight. He starts him off with a breaking ball. Going to try and get ahead, and you can see that ball had a lot of the plate, and Cabrera being the hitter that he is takes advantage of it. Short hops the wall out in left center field, so the Tigers will get their leadoff double. That's two doubles out of their three hits. The Indians shift on the right side with Prince Fielder at the plate. The 1 0 pitch down low. Interesting a story in Sports Illustrated in the May 7th issue about shifts in baseball. Yeah. You'll, you'll never guess who the number one shift-using team in the Tampa game is. Bay. <laughs> like, uh, it's not even close. Uh, well, right. I mean, they, they started it for the most part, and they, they do it with everything and everybody. It had to be them when he went with three infielders and four outfielders to Hafner three years ago. They used 216 shifts last year. The Yankees were second with 53. Actually, the way that reads is the Yankees are a second this year in terms of the pace of what they're on pace to do. Fielder hits one in the air to center. Nice. That's it. Brantley uh, should be able to hold him at second. Cabrera is headed towards third. Here's the throw. They got him. Uh -huh. oh, oh, yeah. He tried to maybe trick him, I guess. Yes, I don't know what he was thinking. Nicely done. I, I, you should never be able to let a guy tag on you from there. And Brantley threw a strike. Great throw. From Michael, that's going to be his third outfield assist. And I mean right on the money. you got to love this. Is that this like is going a to be delayed tag up? <laughs> that's our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Look at him right in the air for a strike. And Cabrera, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't think it was far enough, and he's tagged out easily. Good play. Double play. You know, there's like a delayed steal. Maybe it was a, he was trying to deke him into thinking he wasn't going to go. No, you know what? He just figured uh, he's going to have to make a good throw. And guess what? He did. He so, did, you know what? Right. You tip your cap and you go back. You watch. Cabrera will say something to Brantley at some point in time tonight thinking, I didn't think you were going to be able to get me. And Michael will just smile and say, <laughs> well, I did. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you have to uh, apply the pressure and make a guy make a good play. Or throw you out. Cabrera did that, and Michael was up to the task. Well, we were talking about something before the game, you know, about teams batting with runners in scoring position and just about how a lot of teams are struggling with runners in scoring position to get those big hits, and maybe that's a case where you know, well, that's you're true. pressing a little bit. i got to get to third here. Yeah, you, you try and do more than what you should sometimes and push the envelope a little bit to try and, uh, do things, and, and you you very well could be right where teams are trying to be more aggressive instead of sitting back waiting for something to happen. Normally in America, like, woof. There's a base hit to center field. Well, how big does that play look now? That ball scorched right back at Zach McAllister. That was a good angle, man. From behind, I mean to tell you, that's uh, head high. When you're as tall as Zach, and that ball, there's the good shot. Look how quick that ball gets back to you when you're a pitcher. For you people at home, man, I'll tell you what, that thing whizzes by you. Sounded like it broke his bat. Kipnis throws out Bosch, and the inning is over. So the Tigers get a couple of hits. They do not score. Middle of the fourth. Zeros in Cleveland.
John Thomas serving 30 years here on the Cleveland Police Force, and he's retiring tonight. And look at the hugs. The guys love him out there. The bullpen mafia. Uh-huh. That's the cop that loves the mafia right there. He's <laughs> there a capo. Is. I'll tell you what. Well, good luck, John, in your retirement. Boy, you, why get? Why are you leaving now? We're, we're, we're hot. We're in first place, man. Well, he can... He can enjoy it as a fan now. Well, he may come down and uh, bring out the seeds and the Gatorade for the <laughs> the boys out in the pen. As Dribble Cabrera, hard ground ball to second. Santiago has it, flips it over, one away. Our trivia question brought to you by AT&T. On this day in 1975, A's right-hander Jim Todd allowed the first major league hit to which former Indians outfielder? We'll have the answer coming up later in the game. Pitch inside to Travis Hafner. A little bit low, two balls, no strikes. Down low, and it's 3-0. and oh. And Hafner walks on four straight with one out here in the fourth. That's the second walk issued in the game by Fister. Take a look at our minor league update. Brought to you by University Hospitals, Cord Phelps. Leading the International League now with 14 doubles on the year. Carlos Santana taking a strike, and boy, it's quickly 0-2. You, know, you walk a guy in four straight, and the next guy comes up figuring, well, I don't want to swing at the first pitch. <laughs> and, and, and then he's 0-2 before he can blink. And he strikes him out on three pitches. Second strikeout for Fister, two down here in the inning. It's going to bring up Michael Brantley. You know, we talked about this a little bit last night, but with Brantley and Kipnis, they have started every game together since April 24th. This is their 28th straight start together. Brantley's last non-start in a game was April 24th. The last time Kipnis didn't start a game was April 14th. And Carlos Santana is another guy who doesn't get many, if any, days off. Brantley drives one toward right center field. That's in the gap. Cut off nicely by Bosch. And Hafner will have to stop at third. Brantley doubles with two outs here in the fourth inning. And the Indians have runners at second and third. Well, you talk about laboring going from first to third. Is something wrong with Hafner? what I, I want to know because I'll tell you what, he went in limping. Brantley touched second base before Hafner got to third. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, I watched him go around. I was thinking, let's go. We got a score on this ball. And I mean to tell you, he was laboring. He wouldn't have scored even if that ball got to the wall. Look at that. And watch him come up hobbling. He's grimacing. Yeah, he is. There's something wrong. Johnny Damon looks at the ball inside.
Damon squibs it foul off the end of the bat. Damon flied to deep right his first time up. He had Bosch right at the 375 mark in right field. Rip foul down into the seats. Send along some birthday wishes tonight to uh, Jody Paul celebrating her 31st birthday from Strongsville, Ohio. Jody, happy birthday. Oh, squibber foul up the first baseline. Foul back. Out to the mound goes Gerald Laird with second and third and two down. In a scoreless game. Well, he just wants to go, but Damon's fallen off some pretty good pitches off him so far to stay alive. He just wants to make sure how he wants to try and go about getting him out. Trying to change the pace, and Damon still fought it off. Round ball to first. Fielder has it, takes it himself, inning over. Indian Strand two. We've played four. No score in Cleveland. By Panini's with 17 locations in Northeast Ohio. And by Levin's, home of the Sealy Posturepedic Mattress made right here in Northeast Ohio. Fifth inning, no score. Bottom third of the Tigers order coming up here. Johnny Peralta, Ramon Santiago, and Gerald Laird.
Popped up foul. Out of play again. Round ball to short. Cabrera from the outfield grass knows he has time to get the slow footed Peralta one away. Good range by Cabrera. Well, he knew how deep he was and he knew who was running. You see him, that ball was a tough hop where he had to go down to get it. He didn't bring his glove down to up. Anytime that glove has to go down, it's a little tougher of a play. But he still makes it look easy. Sure does. Ramon Santiago lined the left his first time up. Back out of play. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Boy, you just love the way McAllister and Fister, for that matter, have both just fired strike after strike after strike tonight. Well, this is what Zag did in that one start we saw him in Boston yeah. in Fenway Park. And we says, man, we were amazed. That's what surprised me. We didn't do the game when he was. It was that day game against Seattle, Seattle where he walked five, so we didn't have the opportunity to see him pitch. But I couldn't believe he walked five after throwing 70 percent strikes, and he's right back where he was. You know, for another for a big guy, they talk about repeating your delivery, where Masterson has problem, Ubaldo has problem. This guy has no problem. Just missed with a fastball on a full count. He's had seven counts of 0-2-1-2 so far tonight. In the air, left field. Damon tracking it. Makes the catch. Two away. All right, as we promised you earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light in the fourth. Miguel Cabrera, who doubled us at second base, he decided to test the arm of Michael Brantley. I told you he'd be talking to him. He needed that much more. Look at Michael saying, uh-uh, don't run on me. Can't do that. Uh, you know, you knew he was going to say something because Cabrera loves to talk. He loves to <laughs> chirp. And he's sitting I, over I like there how he said you got me by that much. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what game was he watching? That's a game within the game, though. He said, you never, uh, I almost beat it. <laughs> yeah, he got me by that much. That's his interpretation of the, uh, uh -huh. of the rule. Had him reaching for it. Bounced it to short. Cabrera throws him out. Another 1-2-3 inning for Zach McAllister. Middle of the fifth, no score.
Home half of the fifth, Casey Kochman, Jose Lopez, and Shin Su Chu do up for the Indians. Kochman with a bouncer to first, and Prince Fielder over near the line to make the play. One pitch, one out. Our great clip of the game from last night, Casey Kochman delivering a base hit to center field, driving home Michael Brantley. Great clips. It's going to be great. That proved to be the go-ahead run in the game. Jose Lopez would drive in Kochman later in that inning. To provide the final tally. Down low. Tried to hold up. He didn't go, says Gary Darling down at first, and the count is three and one on Lopez. Had a good cut, but he fouls it yeah, back. Yeah, it's been a pretty count. patient at bat here for Lopez. Payoff pitch. Rip foul over. Almost knocked Casey Kochman back onto the bench. Again, the 3 2. Bounce foul. White Sox and Twins just getting underway in Chicago. Yankees lead the Royals 5-1 there in the fourth in New York. He went around. Third strikeout for Doug Fister, two down. Well, the second jersey giveaway uh, game of the season will be Monday. And the first 15,000 fans through the gates for the Memorial Day game, which will start at 405 it's against the Royals we will take a home replica jersey of uh, Justin Masterson so log on to Indians.com for your tickets or you can call 216 420 hits starting to get a feel for that curveball a little bit because uh, Lopez had a really patient at bat up until that 3 2 pitch where he couldn't hold on but Fister again, man. That's see, that's a strike there. He's he hasn't been getting that call tonight. If he was, yeah. I don't know how much tougher he could be. He's only given up two hits. But that's the pitch he was hitting with the, all last year. That inside pitch to the left-handers. Chu bangs it off the mound, and Peralta gets the room service hop, and the Indians go one, two, three. We go to the sixth. Nothing on the board.
Subway Extreme Fan Zone with today's lucky $25 Indians Fun Money winner, Joe. Joe, I know you're sitting out there. You're hanging out here. How is it? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Great seats anywhere. You can be a winner, too. All you have to do is buy tickets to sit out here in the Subway Fan Zone, Subway, where winners eat. Matt Rick, we'll send it back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Katie. Biggest little Indians fan right there. Top of the six, no score. Trying to bunt his way on. Kipnis on the short hop, can't get it. And then he fell down, and now the kid's going to try to go to second, and he will. And he will go to second base. And they are going to give him a double on that. How well, they almost that? have to because yeah. he went up to try and scoop it and make the, uh, the scoop and the flip. And then he interfered with him. So that ball was over the head of uh, Kotsman. Kipnis tried to get it, and he slipped. And there you see the interference. He didn't. He wasn't going to get the ball, so it actually was a double. Now, how is that interference on Kipnis, though? Well, watch. He's going to second base, and he's not even looking, but he got in his way. It's his first major league hit. He bunted a double. How about that? Check swing foul back. Yeah, you don't see that every day. The way this game is going, though, you can see why Jim Leland's trying to get him over to third. Just trying to get that first run of the game here. Now Dirk swings away and drives That'll it to right to field. Chu can't make the play. It's over his head. Barry's going to score. And the Tigers have a one nothing lead. So a misread by Chu. And Detroit takes a one nothing lead. Well, that is certainly a catchable ball. Let's put it that way. That ball hit on the line. It was going to get him to third base no matter how you look at it. You see, he broke sideways and then had to break back. He just misread the ball off the bat. It was hit harder than he thought. And the ball gets up over his head. That little, uh, you know, br going laterally instead of laying back that'll go as a double so back to back doubles and Detroit takes the lead Now Miguel Cabrera drives on deep right field. Chu, this time he's there to make the catch. Tagging his Dirks. He's going to third. Chu's throw is right on the bag. But Dirks beats it in there. Let's go back to the Hyundai Studios right now for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. All right, man, let's go to New York with the Royals taking on the Yankees and A-Rod with the big ninth thus far. He's two for two with two homers. A two-run shot in the first, a solo home run in the third. Yankees up 5-2 to two now over KC. Andy Pettit, the beneficiary, he's on the hill for the Yanks. Back to you, man. All right, thanks, Al. Indians will bring the infield in. Cut of the grass around the horn with Prince Fielder at the plate 0 for 2. Back out of play. Well, they have Vandal Fielder in the series. Coming inside, Jim. I like it, man. They've stayed, they've stayed in there on him. 0 for 7 in the series, 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. He's left 6 on base and hit into a couple of double plays. But this guy, whenever he steps into the batter's box, is dangerous. Probably was not even a strike, but he fouls it off to stay alive. Send along a happy sixth birthday to Braden Backus in Northville, Michigan tonight. Braden, happy birthday. He's watching there, and guess what? He's a Tribe fan. Here's the set on the 0-2. 
Back out of play. Hit hard on the ground. Cabrera with the backhand. Throw to the plate. Santana with the tag. Drops the ball. And the Tigers lead it 2 to nothing. Cabrera did not make a good throw. And Santana trying to short hop it and apply the tag. Just couldn't hang on. Well, even if he did apply the tag, he, it, he didn't get him. But it was a terrific play because that ball was smoked. When you're playing in at the cut of the grass, you see, he's just got to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And he was calling them safe. There's a short hop. The tag, that would have been close if he held out. I'll tell you that from that angle. But he is called safe. He scores. It's a 2 nothing ball game. Delman Young looks at the ball outside. This will be the 70th pitch of the night right here for Zach McAllister. He's been the unfortunate victim of weird circumstances here in the inning. High pop. Shallow right. In comes Chu. Out goes Kipnis. Chu calls him off. Makes the catch. Two down. Let's get the answer to our AT&T trivia question. A's right-hander Jim Todd allowed the first major league hit to which former Indians outfielder? Of course. Remember that one? Yes, I do. Well, I don't really, but I Really? I do. You don't I remember, remember your first? Yeah, I remember getting a base hit. It was in the third at bat. Um, I do remember it, but it was a long time ago. In that game, you played right field. Started in right, yeah. The left fielder was Rico Cardi. He was? He yep. played left? Mm -hmm. I just remember the big man, D.H. Yeah, and uh, Oscar Gamble pinch hit late in the game. Okay, because he was usually playing. George Hendrick played center. Yep. The 0 2. Fouled away. That guy just bare hand that ball. He sure did. A lot of people are giving him a standing O down there. It looks like the Kegler. It might be his brother. <laughs> <laughs> he just bare handed that ball. It's a big dude. Missed inside. Watch this play. I mean, he just went out. Bare hands it. There you go. No big deal. How about that? Nice play. <laughs> Did you see the faces of those people around him? They can't believe it. Nice catch. Fouled over toward the Tiger dugout. One ball and two strikes. The count on Brennan Bosch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. But the Tigers take advantage here in the sixth. A weird bounce. A misplay in the outfield. It's two zip. Tigers.
Jason Kipnis takes a strike leading off the bottom of the sixth inning. One for two with a single. Indians down two to nothing. After Detroit broke the scoreless tie in the top half of the inning. Now Kipnis down a ball and two strikes. There's a line drive in the center field for a base hit, and the Indians get their leadoff man aboard for the first time tonight. Well, Kipnis did a pretty nice job of getting the hands through on the inside part of the plate. He tried to jam them inside, and look at him pull him through. That's a good job of hitting. See that? Look at him get in there and just, I mean, he didn't smoke it, but, boy, he hit it in the right spot. Good job. He earned that base hit. He's two for three. See if they can come back and respond to that two-run top half of the sixth. Now Cabrera with a liner to deep left. Dirk's racing back. It's over his head, and he makes the catch. And Kipnis has to hustle all the way back to first. Boy, that was a nice play. By Tigers left fielder Andy Dirks. It looked like he was not going to be able to get there. And with the ball over his head, he was able to reach up and make the catch. Well, what a difference a half inning makes. Chu had a ball like that. He couldn't make the catch. Dirks does make the catch. And look at up over his head. I thought it was over his head. I thought it was going to be at least a double. Kipnis would have been at third because he was around second base to begin with. So a nice running catch to take a base hit away from Cabrera. Hit right on the nose. I'm going to bring up Travis Hafner, who walked his last time up. And then looked like he was really laboring on the bases when he went first to third on the double by Brantley. Down low, ball one. Missed inside with it. Two balls, no strikes. White Sox lead the Twins 1-0 in the second in Chicago. Yankees... Over the Royals, 5-2. They are in the fifth in New York. Two zero, and he went to the off-speed pitch. Change up. But that's nothing new. He's been doing it all night. Yeah. Hafner drives one. Deep right center. Bosch, look it up. It is gone. One swing of the bat ties the game at two, and now Hafner can just take his time jogging around the bases. Well, it didn't take long to tie it back up. Three hitters and a big swing of the bat. Watch this pitch upstairs. That might have been a change up as well. I think he was waiting for it that time. Yeah, he came back and that was one too many. And that was elevated a little bit. And Hafner was able to keep the hands back and drive that one into the seat. So a good swing ties it up and they're right back into the ball game. Hafner, his sixth home run. Now Santana with a bouncer to second. Two away. You know, it's amazing how you can look so bad on one changeup, and then the very next changeup, you hit it like that. Well, I mean, you know, you see that pitch. He made the adjustment. adjustment, yeah. 
You know, he's been pounding him in all night long, in, 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 and then when he gets behind him, he goes with change-ups away. And he did on the 2-0 pitch that Hafner had a big swing at, and then he comes back with that change-up, and he didn't hit the same location. Hafner made the adjustment and hit it out. You can almost, like, put yourself in Hafner's head right there saying, go ahead, throw it again, throw it again, come what? on, throw it again. Not a bad thing to look for. Popped up foul ground. Prince Fielder on the move. Makes the catch. Inning over. But Hafner with a smash to the seats in right center field has tied the game at two. at two right now and you if you're a Carlos Viagra fan you want to make sure you're here Sunday June 3rd it will be the second bobblehead giveaway of the season the first 15,000 fans will take home your very own Carlos Viagra bobblehead presented by Medical Mutual if you need tickets check out those Key Bank Grand Slam four pack for tickets food for Indians caps and parking it's a great deal you can get it online now at Indians.com I cannot wait to see what Carlos feels about his bobblehead because you know he will have something to say about it. <laughs> Johnny Peralta leading off the seventh inning, 2 2 game. Peralta 0 for 2, 0 for 5 now in the series. Back out of play. Fastball at the knees on the outside corner, and he gets the call. Third strikeout of the game for McAllister. Doesn't look like Peralta liked that call. Well, let's take a, a look at the replay. Santana's sitting right there. That's a perfect pitch. That is a perfect pitch. Up and away, ball one to Ramon Santiago, who is 0 for 2 tonight. Boy, McAllister has been on his game again tonight. Into the seventh inning, 81 pitches, 60 strikes. Foul back out of play. The mood in Detroit, with the way the Tigers have played over the first 40 or so games, is pretty somber. Fans up there expected this team to come mm -hmm. out of the gate storming, which they did. 
But no one expected them to falter as they have since that great start. Single into right field by Santiago. Looked like Kipnis and Kochman. It was right between them. Yeah, that was placed perfectly. Well, yeah, you look at the Tigers. They haven't won back-to-back -back games since April 17th and 18th. Now, you're looking at a team that went to the, uh, you know, the league championship series last year playing the Texas Rangers. So why have they not won back-to-back -back games in all that time? Listen to this from their manager, Jim Leland. Quote, I think the only thing that's been consistent is the inconsistency. That's pretty much as simple as you can put it. It's mind-boggling to me, end quote. And that's the man that's in charge of these guys. So, I mean, he's he's the one that puts them in there. They have the talent. I mean, when you, it's it's hard to believe they haven't won in over a month. He went on to say, "Quote: I'm, I'm I, it's, I start with myself. Everybody has been disappointing so far. I love this team. I'm a little surprised to say the least. Yet I don't all of a sudden look up and say we aren't as good as I thought we were. So he he obviously believes the talent's there, and he believes they will." start playing better yeah. he just can't figure out why they haven't he's waiting for him to get going like they did last year and it was about last year at this time that they started June. yeah that they started to take off so he's hoping the same thing happens when they catch fire i mean it's not that easy but this team has the talent to do that there's no doubt about it when you get austin jackson back and you get him plugged in and you get fister going he was on the dl for some uh time you got verlander if he stays healthy and scherzer's been up and down he either strikes out or he gives it up or he has to this point and the guy last night porcello has been inconsistent and their bullpen hasn't been as good as last year and, it, and they can't be as good as they were last year because the big boy was perfect. So it's it's tough to fulfill those expectations coming out of spring training and you add a big money ball player at first base because Martinez went down. Foul As we back. said, you still have to play the games. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you, and he knows that. Well, that's exactly right, Rick. And the top five payrolls in ba baseball, the Yankees, the Phillies, the Red Sox, the Angels, and the Tigers, Heading into Tuesday, nobody was above 500. There you go. Not one of the top five payroll teams. Well, and it's still 500. early. True. Still early. Quarter of the way through. Base hit to right field. Santiago stops at second. Our game recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Andy Dirks with the RBI double over the head of Chu. Got the Tigers on the board, and then the infield ground ball that Cabrera's throw, short hop Santana, allowed the second run in. But Pronk came right back with a two-run smash to tie the game, and that's where we are. Find out about more than 30 Toyota offers available now at buyatoyota.com. Well, Manny Acta is going to make a move to the bullpen with two on, one out here in the seventh inning. Zach McAllister will depart. He did a nice job tonight. Left-hander Nick Hagedon is coming on when we come back.
or one out, excuse me. Hagedon, left-handers are hitting just 100 off him, two for 20. And right-handers uh, the same, 205 for 25. But coming on with a couple inherited runners on base. He has inherited four base runners this year. One has scored, but a nice job. Uh, you got to love the way McAllister pitched. He didn't walk anybody. He gave up eight hits, but a couple of those hits, you know, that bunt that this guy got started where they scored their two runs over the head of Kochman, and, and Kipnis tried to make it. It ended up being a double. A ball that was misplayed by, by Chu. They scored a run, and I'll tell you, I thought he, he pitched very well. Barry, a swing and a miss. Quentin Barry, who got the call up. Try and shore up the center field spot with Austin Jackson on the mend. Foul back. You know, we talked about the Tigers, Matty, uh, last year at this. Uh, May 23rd last year, they were 24 and 23. They were better, a game over 500, but they were seven games in back of the tribe. So they're not as in bad a shape as they were last year. Even though their record's not as good. The 0-2. Fouled back. Last year, their surge coincided with getting Victor Martinez back. He had been hurt early in the right. year. Right. Yes, it did. He got hot and he, he was, took off. He was a big part of that, uh, that team last year. Now the 0-2. Able to lay off a close pitch. Just off the outside edge. See Santana sitting away, and that definitely is away. Up high with the heater, two and two. Andy Dirks waits on deck. Throw this kid a belt high, maybe a little bit higher fastball, like you did on that first pitch, and, and you'll you'll throw it by him. I messed with a breaking ball. I, I didn't like that call. Go at him. He's throwing his fastball right by him. He just didn't locate the last two. Well, you know what he's going to throw here. He's not going to mess around with a breaking ball. Throw the fastball. Challenge him. Broke his bat. And a one hopper to short. There's one. And they can't turn the double play. And Tigers are at the corners with two down. Our Ford highlight reel brought to you by your Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. Zach McAllister was a strike-throwing machine here tonight. Through the first five, he was scoreless. A couple of bad breaks cost him two runs in the sixth. But all in all, did a nice job here this evening. Well, that's it. Cabrera wanted to know what's going on. You got first and third here, and you got the speedster at first base. Who's, there's a very good po possibility he could run. He wants to know what's going on. Oh, <laughs> I know Santana has been throwing well, but I don't think they're going to mess around and try and throw through here. With that runner on third, Santiago. He misses low ball one. Pop back. One ball, one strike.
That might have been in the press box if they opened the windows up. Well, they might open them by July. Well, no. They, windows don't open in the zoo until June. Off the glove of Santana and kind of box that one out. Two and one to count with two Tigers aboard and two down in the seventh. Two two ball game. Hagedon's two one pitch. And he missed again, three and one. Right handed hitting Miguel Cabrera waiting on deck. Now Smith is up in that bullpen, and this is going to be Hagedon's last guy if he doesn't retire him. The 3 1. Steps away. Yeah, maybe make a throw to first base just to keep him honest before you go that 3 1 pitch. Nope. Missed outside. He walks him. So Hagedon retires Barry on the fielder's choice. But now the bases are loaded with two down for Miguel Cabrera. And Manny Act is going to go to the righter, right hander. So timeout for another pitching change. Bases loaded, two down on the seventh in a 2 2 ball game. Game. And the Tigers have them loaded up with two down on the seventh. The batter will be Miguel Cabrera. Joe Smith on for the 20th time this year. Four wins, a loss, an ERA of 289. He has struck out 15, walked nine, and almost 19 innings of work. Nowhere to put him. No, he's, so he's coming in there. Jam, boy, you're right. And uh, you're going to face one of the best RBI guys in the game. When you look at him, Joe Smith has come on this year and has had 13 inherited runners on. Three have scored. Well, he's got three out there right now, and he'd love to get Cabrera on one pitch to retire him. This guy will get aggressive with guys on base. The one thing he's not doing this year that he did last year is walk as much. He's expanding his strike zone a little bit more, wanting to drive in more runs. Way outside ball one. He's a 426 hitter with uh, in his career with bases loaded. Well, he is working himself into a serious jam now. Well, he's just letting it fly. He's trying to, he's overthrowing is what he's doing. But this is a situation where uh, I can see how you can do it. Three and oh. 
Prince Fielder's next. Cabrera was off towards first, caught the corner for a called strike, and now he's arguing with the umpire. Well, I'll tell you what, it was borderline. The way Santana caught it, it certainly didn't look like it, but on that strike zone there, it, it, it was close. Now he hits one on the ground. Kipnis has it and throws him out. Boy, Miguel Cabrera let the umpire get in his head right there, and he grounds out weakly. Tigers leave him loaded. Stretch time in Cleveland, tied at two. And the seventh inning stretch is brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic. Call 216-444-CARE for an appointment today where every life deserves world-class care. Two two going to the bottom of the seventh to look in from our Panini's cam. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. Johnny Damon, 0 for two on the night, breaking ball and a little bit high. Left-hander Phil Coke in the Tiger bullpen. 100th pitch of the night coming up right here from Doug Fister. And it's low two and two. Seattle beat Texas earlier today 5-3 the final score in that game. Mariners 21 and 25 now on the year. Damon pops it up. Shallow center. Barry coming in. He's there. He's got it one away. Let's go back to that last at bat, Rick. Break us down pitch by pitch with Cabrera. All right, Smitty comes in overthrowing on the first couple of pitches, and then he tries that slider to slow him down, misses 3-0. That's what Cabrera's mad at right there. 3-0 pitch that looked like ball four, and then he swings at a pitch and gets just makes it out. He's upset he called that pitch, and, you know, what are you going to do? 3-0 pitch. He didn't get him out. He did keep him up there, but he felt that that was ball four. Ripped fouled on the right side by Casey Kochman, who was 0 for 2 tonight.
And he gets him 0 2 now out in front. Time call. Boston beat Baltimore earlier today, also 6 5. Back to the mound, Fister, an easy play. Two down. Every home run hit this year by the Indians means Rick and I are donating $5 each, and Great Clips is chipping in $50 to the gathering place. Our season total now at $2,100 thanks to the Pronk home run. Great needs, great deeds, great clips. Two down for Jose Lopez, 0 for 2 tonight, couple of strikeouts. You know, we told you that Fister didn't get a whole lot of run support. In his first four games, the Tigers supported him by scoring him two, two, zero, three, and tonight they have two. So the beat goes on. Indians are trying to find a way. He's, he's throwing the ball very well. He looks the same to me as he did last year. Yeah, he does. He started six games against the Indians, and this guy was very good to every one of them. He had one of the weirdest injuries. and We've, had, we've seen some weird injuries in recent years, but he, he had something where his rib, uh, rib detached a little bit from the sternum. That's what shut him down for a month. Well, you see, they're, they're, they're complaining to the home plate umpire, Jerry Mills, that that was the same pitch he called on Cabrera. And look at Cabrera's already talking. And you look, it well, is the, a way. The crew chief is being drawn into this, and somebody's going to get run here if they're not careful from Detroit. Gary Darling over in the first base coach's box. He was wandering over there. <laughs> oh, McKen McLennan got thrown out of the game. Lloyd McLennan, the Tigers hitting coach, got the heave-ho. And essentially what he's doing, Rick, is he's sticking up for Miguel Cabrera right well, there, Well, right? he's sticking up for Cabrera, his hitter right there, and he's letting the umpires know, look, if you're going to call it one way, call it the other. It's not the manager in there uh, that's saying it, but he's he, the voice is heard. Lopez fouls it off. Well, again, this goes back to what we talked about earlier. This is a Tigers team that I don't want to say they're pressing, but with the expectations, everyone's talking about where they're at right now. And certainly there are those who follow the Tigers who feel like it is a team that's, they said, you walk in that clubhouse, there's a little tension in the air. It's not a loosey-goosey atmosphere. And, and rightfully so. When you're under well, 500 right. and you're not at the top of the division yeah. where you expect to be, then you, you might be a little yes, indeed. on edge. Lopez, what an at-bat. Base hit left field. He just kept fighting him tooth and nail. And he extends that hitting streak with a base hit right there to left field for Lopez. That's nine straight games. That was. Look at that. He tried to throw that sinker in on him. And he fights it off. So he his streak continues with a good at bat because Fister had him the first two times, and that's going to do it for Doug Fister. So he departs after six and two-thirds innings tonight. We've got a timeout here in Cleveland tied at two.
the ball game. Doug Fister's night is over. He's responsible for the runner at first. And the left-hander Phil Koch coming on now for Detroit. Yeah, good night for Fister. We'll see if they can get him out of it. Phil Koch, the left-hander, coming on to face Chu for the 21st time. 458 ERA. 17 and two-thirds innings. 16 strikeouts and only five walks. Can be tough on left-handers. Chu awaits the pitch. Tell you what, he has done a tremendous job in that leadoff spot. But tonight, they've kept him in check 0 for 3 so far. The bullpen for the Tigers this year has struggled. They are last in the league when it comes to ERA. 476. And the amazing thing, as good as the Indians' bullpen has been, they are just right ab above them as yeah. far as ERA goes. You know, something in that just doesn't seem to jive either. Well, uh, I know it, 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 you're right, and he did not go. It's like when uh, they've had some a couple of bad outings, you know, in games that maybe got out of hand. It seems like any time that the game has been close that they've been very, very good. There's been very few that have gotten away from them. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, because you know, we're sitting here watching every night, and, and they seem, when they come through that gate, they seem to do their job every time. But you don't worry about the ERA. It's when you get that one run and you slam the door when you have to. 1-1 one, one pitch. Out of play. That's a good point. I mean, the ERA could certainly, you know, somebody's bullpen has an ERA of 1.19. Well, then th that probably means they are really good. But you could have a really good bullpen with an inflated ERA because of a your, couple of your long right. men blew up in a game. Yeah, that's, and that happened a couple of times. I know it did, but you know, you're not putting any blame because you're all together. But when they're good or they're in games, they've been they've been good. They've, I think their bullpen is very good. Down on the dirt. Lopez got hung out to dry, and he is a dead duck. He took off and then stopped, and once he did that, it was pretty much a foregone conclusion he would be the final out of the inning.
presented by the authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Two-two as we go to the eighth, and this crowd of twenty-two thousand tonight here at Progressive Field it includes a walk-up of over sixty-four hundred, seventh-largest walk-up crowd in the history of this ballpark. Beautiful night, big-time showdown, and the Tribe fans have turned out tonight, and they have witnessed a dandy so far. It'll be Prince Fielder, Dalman Young, and Brennan Bosch coming up for the Tigers here. Indians will put that shift on for Fielder, who is 0 for 3. You know, it doesn't sound like maybe a lot at 22,000. When you consider your season ticket base is around seven or 8,000, and most people who buy their tickets in advance record are looking for summer dates when school's out, when they know right. they can get the kids and go to right. a game. That's a pretty good flash crowd to just walk up and buy tickets. Well, you got a, a beautiful notice. day. You yeah. got the Tigers, you know, your rivals within the division. You got Fister going. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's not a bad day to walk up to. Tomorrow will be a nice day. Beautiful sun, and you got Verlander and Masterson. Then we get and at noon. And we get some big uh, school kid crowds to roll in tomorrow. Yes, I think we'll be KYC in Weather Day too. We're expecting a crowd in the twenties tomorrow, maybe a little bit more. Obviously, tomorrow a lot of folks will be at work, so it's tough to just say, "Hey, let's go to a ball game, and blow off well, work." Well, you take a half a day off. Starts at noon. As they bill it, a lunch in three innings. The one-two. Hit into the shift. Long throw for Kipnis. He sets. He fires. Pulled Kochma off the bag. Well, that's the gamble you take with that shift. Right. But if he's not there, then that's a, a base hit without even a yeah, play. That's a long throw coming in there. I want to see what they do and what they give him because if he makes a good throw, they get him. That's got to be an error. You see how deep he is. You're right. If he's not out there, he's not going to get the ball. But by the time Kochman got back, you see he got down underneath. Tried to get a little extra. He had more time than I think he thought from way in right field. Yeah, he really almost Cut sidearmed underneath. it. Yeah. So that'll go as an error. And that's it for Tony Sip. So we've got a timeout as Vinny Pistano comes on. 2-2 in the eighth. Two-two game in the eight, one on, nobody out. Delman Young coming up. Vinny Pistano, 21st appearance of the year. One and 255 ERA. 
Well, normally we see Vinny on in the eighth inning when the Tribe is winning. Right now it's a tie ball game. Manny wants this game. You got to have it if you're the Indians. Take the first two if you can get them. I mean, a divisional game, you're going to face Verlander tomorrow. Any way, shape, or form, you want this game because it's a quick turnaround. And because of exactly what you just said, the Tigers want this game badly yes, too because and, right. if they can somehow get out of here with a victory with Verlander, right. that guy going tomorrow, they feel like they can win the series. Yeah, you want this win. This is a big win no matter who's going to get yep. it. Both these managers are going to manage like it's the last game. Meanwhile, the White Sox have opened a 3 nothing lead over the Twins in Chicago. They're in the fourth inning. Yankees beating up Kansas City 8-2 in the seventh in New York. Here's the 1-0. Right back to the screen. He had a good cut. In the air right field. Chu on the move. Got a late break. It's dropping. Fair ball. Just inside the line. Chu didn't get a real good read on it. I don't know that he would have gotten there anyway. But. No, he wouldn't have. I mean, that's just a ball that hits off the end of the bat. It slices off, and it's going to stay fair. So it goes as a base hit. At least he didn't get to third base. You see that ball right off the end. There was no carry to it. He's playing the back. There's no way he could have gotten there. Well, they got their work cut out for him now. Bosch is going to go talk to third base coach Gene Lamont. And he's going to relay his sign directly to him ver- uh, vocally. I would not expect him to bunt in this situation. But I wouldn't either. But let me see. You're bunting him over for Peralta. And then Vinny Pistano, very tough against right-handed hitters. I would not think so. Tigers aren't a team that sacrifice a lot. They're a, they're a, t- a team that they, they try and bang you, hit you out of the ballpark. Old school, like Earl Weaver style. They go for the they go for the kill. He was swinging for the downs right there and fouled it back. You know, you look at a lot of these guys, and you, they're not asked to bunt a lot. So when you get the game on the line, that you're what you're doing, you're helping the other team. When you have a guy bunt that never bunts, Leland knows his team better than anybody. So obviously, he feels. Go ahead, get a base hit. Swung on and missed. Chased a breaking ball down and in. And it's 0-2. Good slider. Out of the zone. Bosch helps him out. That slider for a ball, but he swings over the top of it. Here's the set of the 0-2. Line to left, a base hit. Damon gets to it quickly, unloads it in a hurry. But the bases are loaded now with nobody out. Well, on an 0-2 pitch. Yeah, he just threw him a good slider that he buried down and in, and he comes back with a fastball away. And that sort of shocked me a little bit. You see where he's sitting. And that ball was up, elevated. It was about mid-thigh, almost belt. Easy pitch for Bosch to handle. They helped him out. They let him back into the at bat with that pitch. All right, here's Johnny Peralto for three now on the night. Big spot in the game here. Indians bring the infield part way in. Peralta leans back. It's a slider in for a strike. Now, Pistano is a strikeout pitcher, and he could really use a strikeout here. Bang foul. And it's 0-2. Vinny Pistano in a tough spot. With the bases loaded and nobody out. He's got Peralta down on the count 0-2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That a boy. See, that's what I thought he was going to do to Bosch after he went after that breaking ball. 
He, he threw a pitch out of the strike zone. He gets Peralta to swing and miss. I mean, when you watch the sequence, you're going to see him get ahead. There's the slider, strike one. Boom, another one. Now, expand the zone. He got him to swing the ball out. So there it is. That's out number one. Ramon Santiago, one for three. This is a guy, pretty short swing, will more than likely put the ball in play. So this is where, you know, if he bangs one on the ground, you might be able to get out of the inning with a double play. Oh, here. yeah, he hits one on the ground. You can turn the double play on him. He's not a speedster by any stretch of the imagination. Go home. Kochman comes home with the throw. They get the out there. Fielder has forced it to dish two down. Nice play by Casey Kochman. No panic. Nice and easy. Good throw to get the lead runner. Well, that was his only play. Yep. There's no way they were going to get a double play on this ball, so you go home. Especially, that was a nice pitch. A fastball above the belt on the hands. So he buried it in on him, and Kochman's only play, just a good, safe throw. You weren't going to turn a double play. Get the lead runner. You got your two outs. Now a chance to get out of the inning, and you're going to get a pinch hitter. Avila. Alex Avila, left-handed pinch hitter, will come on for Gerald Laird. And for Alex Avila, this is just his second appearance as a pinch hitter this year. He is 0 for 1. Yeah, this crowd, get on your feet. Exactly right. They got a chance to get out of a bases loaded, nobody out situation here in the 8th. Time to make some noise here as Vinny Pistano tries to work out of it. Avila batting 224 on the year. Hit his fifth home run of the season last night. Providing all of the Tigers offense. Down and in and a good stop by Santana. This time, watch his body move. He knows that the man on third, you've got to get out and smother this ball. Anything behind you, a run could score. Young on third base. Thus said. And the 1-0. Fouled right back to the screen to even the count. Bases loaded, two down. Castano sets in the 1-1 to Avila. Inside. Almost everybody in the ballpark is standing at the moment. You can feel that the game might be hanging in the balance right here. Pastano ready. And the 2 1. Swung yes, he on did. and missed. He went around to even the count. Now that roar from this progressive field crowd of just over 20,000. Urging on Vinny Pistano here in a very clutch situation. The 2-2. Outside of the full count. Well... Why not squeeze every ounce of drama out of this at bat that you can? Yeah, they sure will, but there's, I don't think, a whole lot now. Does he go, got to go with your best pitch? You got to throw a strike here. Now everybody in the building is up. Runners will be off with the payoff pitch. Strike three called. 
Pastano rings him up, and the Tigers leave him loaded. Detroit now four for 30 on the year in bases loaded situations. Well, it's been a drama-filled ball game here tonight, going to the bottom of the eighth. Well played, just as last night's game was. Kind of what you expect when you get really the two well, best teams I, in the division. You can't put any more into one inning. Bases loaded and nobody out. And then you get to bases loaded, two outs, 3-2 three, count. And Vinny Pastano comes up and paints a knee-high low heater to Alex Avila, who remains in the game behind the dish for strike three. That was a pretty good inning right there. Pretty good. Yeah, he can smile now. But I'll tell you what, there was no smiles before this last pitch. <laughs> Watch this. Knee high on the black. Bang. Oh, man, that's a clutch pitch. Look at him. That was a, a great pitch. So now the Indians will send the top of the order to the plate here in the home half of the eighth inning. Phil Coke. Came on to face Shinsu Chu in the bottom of the seventh inning. But he didn't retire Chu because Gerald Laird picked off Jose Lopez down at first base to end the inning. Routine fly ball to center field. Drives Barry back a few strides out number one. Tonight's Box score brought to you by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers who invite you to go see the 2012 Sonata. Visit NorthernOhioHyundaiDealers.com today. Bronx two-run homer accounting for the Indians offense so far here tonight. Jason Kipnis breaking out of his slump with two hits. And he scored on half's bomb in the sixth. Low for ball one. And a strike called to even the count one and one. Phil Cope fires and Kipnis pops it foul. That'll find the seats. Joaquin Benoit getting loose now in the Tiger pen. Chris Perez up in the Indians bullpen. Bottom of the eighth inning in a 2-2 game. Tigers have out hit the Indians in the game 10-5. And nowhere is that more evident than the 
LOB column. They've left 10 men on base while the Indians have left just four. Kipnis fouls it the other way out of play. Two two. Boy, he was jammed, and I think he swung more of a self defense than anything else. Pitch was really bearing in on him. That ball looked like it hit the bat first before he even started the swing. <laughs> yeah, he said, <laughs> All right, stay alive. Give me one more chance. Down off his foot. I know one of your biggest pet peeves is. When you hear media people ask athletes, in particular in baseball, how big is this game? How big is this series? Especially this early in the year. And the guys, I think, for, for the most part, they always say the right things. It's one game. It's early, a long season. But they're playing. The way they're playing tonight, you, you know this. Yeah. There's a little more importance uh, yes, indeed. in these games. And there should be. It gets oh. by Koch. He kicks it to Cabrera, and Kipnis is aboard. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. You're right. This game means a lot to both teams. But you don't want to come out and publicly make a big deal about it and well, talk to the media about it. It's not one game. It's not. It's one series. You yeah. better beat these guys at home in your own in the series. Coke helps him out here off the end of the glove. If he makes the play, just catch it. He's going to get him, but he doesn't. Well, that's what they say. Pitcher's best athletes out there on the mound. See that? Getting this infield single. Number six. Yeah, I don't know if it had any funny spin on it. I think he just misplayed it. Just yeah. kicked it off the end of his glove. Oh, yeah. That's Dribble Cabrera. He flied to deep left his last time up. He really put a charge into one, but Andy Dirks made a great run and grab on it. Boy, that was good. You didn't get a, a look from that angle, but as Phil Coke made his fake towards first. Jason Kipnis just leaned back towards the bag. He didn't even budge as if to say I'm not buying that phony baloney move. And Cabrera fouls it over to Steve Smith. Cabrera has had some clutch hits against this Tigers team in recent memory. Down low. Jason Kipnis, by the way, does have six stolen bases on the year. Cabrera drives it deep left field. Short hops the wall. On his way to third is Kipnis. I mean, he was flying into third base. If not for the fact that Dirks made that play perfectly clean, Kipnis might have kept on going. But he never bobbled it. He made a good throw to his cutoff man. And Kipnis had a full head of steam. Double for Cabrera. Second and third and one out. You talk about being locked in. Cabrera hit a bullet. Second consecutive at bat. This time it finds the, uh, the left field line. That'll go as a double. Kipnis on his way to third. Half they're going to be the batter. The infield will be in. Now it's the Indians' turn to try with one out. And a man uh, on third base. Hafner, the reason why the Indians are in this, the two-run homer back in the sixth. Well, here is Pronk in the clutch. Infield in for Detroit. The Tigers had this opportunity in the top half of the inning and could not convert. Now, they had bases loaded and nobody out. Indians have second and third with one out.
Now the question sometimes in these situations, Rick, is do you pitch to Hafner, who clobbered the homer earlier, or do you put him on, load him up, no, and take no, your no, chances? No, 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 no. You go at Hafner here. You don't put him on. You've got the switch hitter Santana on deck, who's better from the right side. But he's struggling, too. Well, he is struggling, but I, I'll tell you what. You've got to go at Hafner with some good pitches and see if you can get ahead of him and pitch him tough. And if you walk him, you walk him. But you know you don't put him on intentionally. No way. Here we go. The pitch. Travis couldn't help himself. Might have chased a anxious. bad ball there. Here's one where Hafner has been struggling with runners in scoring position as well. And, I mean, you just got to be patient. The pressure's on the pitcher here, man. He's got an open base. And Hafner knows. He's been around long enough to know. Relax, man. You're going to get a decent pitch to hit. When you do, just put it in play. Bronk, two ribbies last night, two more tonight. Way outside to even the count of ball and a strike. Hafner walked in the fourth, flied to right his first time up, but the two-run homer in the sixth tied the game 2-2. And that was right after Fister had fooled him on a changeup. He came back with another one, and Travis waited back on it and launched it out of here. Go ahead, run. Jason Kipnis just 90 feet away. It's Drupal Cabrera at second. Infield in for Detroit. And the 1-1. Hit on the ground. Fielder coming home with the throw. Throws it long. Gets away. Kipnis is safe. Indians take the lead. It comes down to executing basic fundamentals. Kochman did. Fielder didn't. Indians have the lead. Well, that's the pressure of going on contact when you have a guy that can run like Kipnis. You're forcing the defense to make a good throw. Fielder did not make a good throw. He comes in. He's got him at home plate. He tries to throw it on the run as short hops Avila. As Kipnis comes in, puts the hand down, the Indians take a 3-2 to two lead. And that has killed the uh, Tigers as well this year as their defense. But the Indians take the lead and an opportunity to add some more. Shelly Duncan will run for Travis Hafner now at first base. And Carlos Santana at the plate. Santana 0 for 3 on the night. Up high, 2-0 to Santana. Carlos has flied to left, struck out, grounded out. One for six in the series. Here comes Jeff Jones, the Tigers pitching coach. Now we saw Joaquin Benoit up in that bullpen. And, and this is, this is, you know, Rick, we've seen the left-handed parade out of opposing bullpens but if you don't have a multitude of lefties you're kind of in that situation if you're the manager like well righty lefty 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 I mean where if you've got the right hander in the bullpen who do you bring him in to match him up against you've well, almost got to stay with your guy here yeah but their right hander can get left handers out because of that splitter that change up that he has but you gotta you gotta trust coke here he's a good pitcher but he's just trying to do too much right now. I think that play over there at first base really hurt him because he made a good pitch to Hafner. He did, he did his job, but the defense let him down. So now he's trying to be a little too perfect. Santana with a high drive to center. There you go. Barry back. He makes the catch. Tagging is Cabrera. He can roll home 4-2 Indians. Santana gets his 23rd run batted in on the year. So good execution here in the eighth.
Well, there's that insurance run that you, you love to get. Santana does it. Hafner with three ribbies. Santana with the other one. Duncan running. Here's the throw. And they got him. So that'll end the inning. But the Indians get two in the eighth. And they'll take a 4-2 lead into the ninth as Chris Perez will be coming on to save it. Here at Progressive Field where the joint is jumping. The 22,000 here making about as much noise as a 40,000 sellout crowd. And the Indians will take a 4-2 lead into the ninth as Chris Perez coming on to try and notch his 15th save of the year. He'll have to go through the top of the order. The same situation yesterday when he comes in for the save. He went from 9-1-2, ended up going 3-4. He's starting at the top tonight. And you better cheat in over here if you're Kipnis at second base for a bunt. He burned him earlier in the game. Perez fires and a fastball in there for strike one. Check swing, 0 oh, and 2 the kill. Two strike pitch. A little bit high with the heater. Out of play. Now the one, two. Just a, an emergency swing sent him scattering over there by the dugout. Everybody moved except Shelly Duncan. He's like, go ahead, hit me. Can't hurt me. Barry, one for four on the night, and that one, a bunt, it went for a double. Swung out and missed. He struck him out.
Good heater here by Perez running away from him. Look at the movement on that pitch, and that was not even close. That thing took off. Great movement, gets a swing and miss. One down. The pitch. And a strike called to Andy Dirks, who is one for three on the night. He doubled and scored his last time up. Conrad's postgame show coming up right after the ball game here on Sports Time Ohio. It's 0-2. We'll have the highlights. Talk to one of the heroes and look forward to tomorrow's series finale. Remember, tomorrow it's a noon game. If you can't get down here for the 12 o'clock start, we will televise the game right here on Sports Time Ohio tomorrow at 12. The 0-2 pitch. Grounded foul. Justin Verlander for the Tigers. Justin Masterson for the Indians tomorrow at 12. The 0-2. A little bit outside. Back out of play. Chris Perez kicked the hornet's nest recently when he came out and talked about the lack of crowds here at Progressive Field. But you know what? <laughs> it's gone in his, his credit, favor. But to his credit, he, he didn't run and hide from no, it. No, he did not. He told the truth. And he stood up and answered every question after. Looked like he came out of his toehold on when he planted on that last pitch. Two and two. Base is empty in the ninth. Indians up 4-2. 2-2 pitch. Good at bat here by Dirks as he keeps fighting them off. Well, you do anything to stay alive, anything to foul off pitches and give yourself one more opportunity. That's a good job of fouling that pitch off. That might have been off the plate for a ball, but he just fouls it off and says, let me live for one more pitch. And hopes that he makes a mistake. He's going to get a heater away. And another foul back. Remember yesterday he didn't seem to have that, that uh, good tight slider that he had over the weekend. When he has his slider, he's unhittable. Forget about it, yeah. Because he's throwing 94-95 now. His velocity is up. Yeah. It wasn't as high last year, but he's, uh, last night it was to the guys he faced. When he's got his slider, he's unhittable. Ninth pitch of the at-bat right here. Another fastball back. Yeah, into the press box. No, the Walrus had his arm out for it. You got to have the windows open in order to make the play. The windows. The battle continues here. The two-two, down and in. Dirks knows if he can get aboard, Miguel Cabrera waits on deck. So this is a very, very big matchup right here for CP. And the payoff pitch. Struck him out looking. Two down well, in the ninth inning. Tell you the truth, I think Dirks was looking inside or outside. Well, I'm sure we'll get another look at it inside. See what you think. That's where Santana's sitting away. Oh, that's a strike for sure. Well, he was looking huh? away. And there it is. Locks him up. There were some pitches in there that weren't called. That one was called. He can't believe it. But that was not a bad pitch. Two down for Miguel Cabrera. And a breaking ball just missed inside. Cabrera two for four on the night. A single and a double in his first two trips. 
0 for 2 since then. But it was his overzealousness on the base paths early in the game that in a game like this you can go back and say, boy, what if? He tried to tag up and go to third after he doubled the lead off the fourth inning, and he was doubled up to wipe out a potential scoring threat. Two and one to count. Perez, 20 pitches in the inning. Most of them have been strikes. And you come back where he had an opportunity with bases loaded and then a count 3-0 and oh, and felt on that other pitch he walked, and that's going to do it. Michael Brantley under it in center field, and the Indians win again. The Tribe has taken the first two. They've clinched the series win against the Tigers, and the Tribe has won seven of their last nine, and they are a season high. Seven games over 500 now at 25 and 18. And for the first time this year, they're over 500 at home at 13 and 12. Terrific job by the Indians pitching staff and especially the bullpen here tonight. 4-2 is your final score. And here's our key play of the game brought to you by Key.